All right, we just did a video where we were given a value and we substituted it into our equation to see if it was the correct solution. But what happens if they don't give us a value and we have to actually find it? We have to solve the equation all by ourselves. Well, we're going to learn a few properties or principles that are going to help us solve any algebraic equation. The first one is called the addition principle. What it says is that if I have two things equal, A equals B, then if I add the same quantity to both sides, then the sides should still be equal. The equation should still be true. Let me show you an example. If I have 3 equals 3, that's a true statement, right? 3 does equal 3. Well, what happens if I add 4 to both sides? Well, 7 equals 7, right? So as long as I add the same quantity to both sides of the equal to sign, the equation should still be true. The left side should equal the right side. So what we're going to do is we're going to use that principle to solve some equations. Look at example number two. It asks us to solve. So what we want to do is we want to find what x works in this equation. And without having to sit there and plug numbers in and try it and plug another m and try it, plug another number in and try it, instead of plugging and chugging, let's actually use the addition property to solve for x. Instead of just guessing numbers, let's actually find the number that works. So you notice that I have a orange line where my equal to sign is. Our goal is to try to get x by itself so we can figure out what x equals. You notice that I have a positive 5 next to the x. I have an x plus 5. What we can do is we can get rid of the positive 5 by using the opposite, the inverse function of adding. So the opposite of adding is really subtracting. Now the addition principle says as long as I do it to both sides, my equation should still be true. I can either add the same quantity to both sides or I can even subtract. As long as I'm subtracting the same quantity from both sides, it should still be okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to get rid of this positive 5 by using the opposite of positive 5, which is negative 5 or subtracting 5. I need to make sure that I do it to both sides so I can keep my equation balanced. You notice positive 5 and negative 5 cancel each other out. So then what's left on that left side? Just x, right? Now on the right side, I have a negative 7 minus 5, which gives me negative 12. So now I have an answer that says x equals negative 12. Well, how can I double check that that's right? Well, remember from example number one, if we have a solution, we can always double check that it's a correct solution by plugging it back into the equation and making sure that the left side does equal the right side. So let's try that real quick. If I plug in negative 12 and I add 5 to it, do I get negative 7? Negative 12 plus 5 is negative 7. And so the left side equals the right side. And then I know that x equals negative 12 is the correct solution. It works. All right, let's try another one. If you look at b, I have x minus 3 equals 8. And I want to figure out what x is. So if I want to get x by itself so I can get it to say x equals, I really need to get rid of that minus 3. What's the opposite of minus 3? Plus 3, right? So as long as I use the opposite, they should cancel out, and I should be able to get x by itself. So I'm going to add 3 to both sides. And as long as I do it to both sides, we know that our equation is still balanced. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0. And so I just have x left on the left side. And what's 8 plus 3? I got 11. So I ended up saying getting a solution x equals 11. Let's double check that that works. If I plug in 11 to my original equation, 11 minus 3. Does that equal 8? Perfect. So I know that I got the right answer, x equals 11. It takes us a few seconds just to double check, but we should be able to get 100% on the next test by just simply plugging in our answers to make sure that they work. Pretty cool, huh? All right, let's do one last one. This one has decimals, but we're going to do it the same way as before. I see a y. I see a y minus 8.4, and I want to figure out what y equals. So I really want to get that y all by itself. That means I need to get rid of that negative or minus 8.4. What's the opposite of minus 8.4? Yeah, plus 8.4, right? So as long as I do it to both sides of the equal to sign, add 8.4 to both sides, I should still be balanced. A negative 8.4 and a positive 8.4 cancel each other out, and I'm left with a y on that side. On the other side, I have a negative 6.5 plus an 8.4. This is a little bit tricky. Now remember, they're opposite signs, so I should be able to take the 8.4 and subtract the 6.5 and keep the sign of the bigger number, which is positive. You should end up getting 1.9. So that means y equals 
You could double check by plugging in a 1.9 and making sure that it works. Hopefully it does so we have the right answer, right? All right, so always make sure that you do the opposite or inverse function uh, to cancel the numbers away from your variable. And then you can always double check by plugging your numbers back into the original to see if it works.